Hello and welcome to Biohackers live show. This is a special episode and uh, it's one that you will probably remember uh, after <laughs> we go through all the material here. Uh, we're going to discuss about how to biohack your oral health. So th that, is, that is kind of topic that uh, not many biohackers or health enthusiasts uh, talk about Hello and welcome to Biohackers Live it's, it's kind of obvious. Show. Everybody hopefully this is their a teeth. Teeth. And uh, usually that's about it. But uh, the oral health has to do a lot with the overall health of the whole system and the whole body. And today we have two special guests uh, from a company called Koite Health that have created this amazing photodynamic uh, oral or dental health technological device called Lumoral. So welcome guys. Who, who we have here? Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm Tommy Patile. I'm a pediatric cardiac surgeon by profession and I'm the chairman of board in the Health company that uh, is uh, developing this uh, new, new kind of a system to improve your oral hygiene. Hello, my name is Sakari Nikinma. I'm a master in science, CEO of Koita Health, uh, co-founder of uh, Koita Health. Yeah, that, that is uh, absolutely uh, amazing that you are here uh, with a such a short notice. Uh, before we go into deeper into the today's uh, subjects and topics, uh, we would like to remind you that um, we have the Lumeral device in our shop, and now it's... Uh, for a couple of days, 10% off with the code DENTAL2022. Uh, if you go to biohackercenter.com, there you can find it. And I'm pretty sure after this show, a lot of you guys <laughs> are going to go, go go to our shop and order this device. So um, I would like to hear a little bit up about the background of Koite Health and Lumeral. And first and foremost, uh, about your background, how, how have you come up with this uh, technological solution to create this kind of uh, amazing um, device that, that's really helpful for, especially for people if they're afraid of go, going to the dentist, as I see quite many people are. Of course, this is not a replacement for, for a dentist, but in, in cooperation, uh, Lumeral and a proper dentist can work wonders. So um, I don't know that much about you guys. Uh, we, we talked maybe 15 minutes, but uh, I would really like to know um, uh, like a, something about you. What, what's your background? How did you come up into this unique device? And uh, the story behind it is it's always very interesting. Yeah, of course. It's a... Uh uh, if you don't mind, Tom, okay, yeah, I'm happy, yeah, to, happy to elaborate. It's a, yeah, of course, this is a tool tool for dentists, but also for anybody who wants to wants to take care of their oral health and improve it dramatically. But uh, how we ended up in the where we are now is it's actually a long story. My personal life has always been in in trying to decide between engineering and, uh, uh, and healthcare and uh, medicine. And I actually, before going to engineering school, I was really interested in going to medical school, but I ended up choosing a, uh, being a bi biomedical engineer. But in 2016, I had an opportunity to join Biodesign Finland program, which is a groundbreaking program originated from Stanford University where engineers go to the uh, healthcare facility and look for things to improve. And in that uh, program, I met Tommy, who was working at this, uh, this hospital. We went in and it was, we clicked immediately that, uh, that uh, this is something like we had both had a passion for science, but then, uh, of course, Tommy had really good understanding what is important in the field of medicine and then we started working together from that point on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how, you know, uh, the best things usually happen. This, this kind of reminds me of how, how uh, Teemu Arena, my uh, <laughs> partner in crime, 
came to my doctor's office and, and the rest is history. But so great things usually happen like this. So uh, maybe Tommy, a little, little bit of more elaboration. And uh, I would like to especially uh, hear since uh, being a pediatric uh, heart surgeon and now coming up with this oral health device, that, that's kind of a very interesting combination. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> sounds like a big leap, but it's. Uh, I, I started um, <coughs> as a general doctor. I started operating people at uh, 1998, 7th of January in uh, in Lapland, Finland, and uh, I've been I've been operating pe- patients since. And um, I I came from. Uh, from Lapland to Helsinki to <coughs> specialize in cardio, cardio, th- cardiothoracic surgery, and uh, and during during the f- kind of first years there, I started doing my PhD, which was about uh, st- all crazy stem cells, stem cell uh, t- therapies for heart failure, and the gene tr- gene transplantations for the for the same and uh, things like that and i've been always kind of interested in kind of new new ideas and and um during our our studies we we kind of found out that uh, there would be this possibility to kind of treat treat bacteria with light with the with the basic uh, photodynamic therapy where you have a kind of light activating substance and uh, I had this idea. We tested it with the uh, professor of uh, professor of uh, microbiology, Marti Var, late Mart- Marti Var, and I th- I th- it worked mm. great. And then I just suddenly met Sakari, who came to our our clinic and uh, as a visitor, and uh, it we just clicked immediately. And kind of <laughs> we've been together since. Yeah. It was 2016, <laughs> and uh, it, it's kind of it, it started from there. We just had we had the idea and the kind of basic kind of experiments, and we we've, we've been kind of working on it since since ever you know since then. Mm. And uh, that that is so so fascinating. And uh, I would like to remind that our viewers, you can ask questions about these two gentlemen and maybe myself even here about oral health in general and uh, there, there are there are some questions that you were asking like when you uh, fill the type form form on on different things on oral health and uh, I would like to know that uh, before we go in deeper into Lumoral what what, what do you think uh, based on your expertise are the most uh, convenient ways of improving our oral health like in everyday life uh, of course, we can go through like the basics, like toothbrushing and so on. But um, like all the things, what what do you do do like personally? And uh, I can elaborate what I do. And I'm sure there's actually a dentist uh, following us, and perhaps she has also some nice questions for us. So, what's like top five? Maybe like top five for oral health in every day. Of of course, the oral health is uh, it's. Uh, most of the oral diseases are actually caused by bacteria, chronic bacteria build up on a, on a teeth surface, which then lead to development of, of cavities or gum disease. And uh, the, the removing the bacteria by good oral hygiene, hygiene means is most essential. Of course, then uh, you can add fluoride. It's uh, it's uh, important, especially against if you have uh, acid producing. Uh, uh, bacteria, which can then uh, then cause cavities and uh, solubilize enamel. So in that regard, fluoride is really important to to streng- strengthen the enamel acid tolerance. And then, uh, of course, any mechanical means of removing and uh, doing like a good uh, mechanical cleaning of the teeth is really important. Personally, I also apply Murumoral twice a week to my cleaning to enhance the antibacterial effect and remove even the dental plaque I don't uh, I'm not able to remove with the mechanical means yeah that that is like the basics what about uh, scraping your tongue so I assume that I've been doing that 
for almost 10 years now. And ever since I discovered that practice, uh, it d- significantly improved my oral hygiene and health. And the carriers actually stopped. Of course, I fixed the nutritional deficiency that, that we can also discuss maybe later. But uh, yeah, scraping your tongue. What are the thoughts on that? I think it's really important, especially if you have a, a large biofilm buildup on, on, a, on a tongue surface. Tongue is an excellent reservoir for, for uh, good bacteria, for all the bacteria. So I think, yeah. uh, like, I wouldn't sterilize tongue, never, <laughs> but removing the kind of, if there is a lot of biofilm buildup, just remove the excess one, and then, yeah. uh, then that definitely will have an effect. Would it be like uh, two times per day, like morning, evening, or one time enough in the morning? I think it's just personal, like personal. What, is your, what, what is your need in a way. I think people have different bacteria, flora, different sure. build-up, different dietary. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then uh, maybe like um, uh, cleaning your the, the bit in-betweens of your teeth, like... Uh, I don't recall what's that in English, but uh, this yeah, that's some something yeah. people use usually sk- that many times skip, and it's it's very very important. To very important, yeah. Take care of the kind of interdental. Yeah. Interdent- uh, how, how often? Because I I see like kind of uh, varied opinions on on that, and uh, not like every day, but maybe a couple of days a week, or or every day, multiple times per day. I think it it should be definitely done every day. Every day, okay. And uh, tooth brushing, which we usually do twice a twice a day. For example, uh, the mm, I think uh, Brazilian people brush aver- an average six or seven times a day. What? Their teeth. <laughs> so how do they have time? <laughs> That's uh, is that like a? It's it's a fact. Yeah, yeah. They they really okay. appreciate good shoes and good teeth. <laughs> yeah. So um okay, what what else? Um What about uh, like this thing called oil pooling? I, I don't know if you've heard that, but maybe using using some kind of like antibacterial oil such as like uh, coconut oil that has some lauric acid that ca- could potentially destroy some harmful bacteria. I think that like uh, in like mouthwashes and and uh, maybe like uh, I'm not too familiar with the oil. I haven't read the clinical data myself. If there has been studies, it's. Uh, I think it's important to note that uh, it's not targeted. So maybe not do it uh, too much that it will affect the uh, like the whole oral flora, but mm. it definitely. Once in a while, I, I wouldn't wouldn't say that it's it's harmful either. Yeah. So uh, that shouldn't be like everyday practice, but you know, every every now and then, and it's it's kind of that that for myself. So I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I could do this, uh, <laughs> like kind of pulling thing. But now that I've been using the Lumeral, uh, it, it it kind of feels so ineffective because the Lumeral device is just so effective and uh, we can go there a bit deeper um, maybe later when, when we have uh, some excellent slides about the, the technology and, and what's actually behind that and the science but how many times do you use Lumeral? Uh, for my use it's preventive use so for that it's uh, it's twice a week use so and that that's that what I, I try to keep up and of course if if there is major problems with the uh, like um, which require more more frequent use of course then then I would recommend uh, that 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 uh, even the daily protocol yeah and so so the daily protocol is <coughs> if you actually have some kind of like a bleeding gums and like gums, this yeah. active ac- active inflammation in the gum yeah and. Uh, if you do dental flossing and you have some bleeding, is that a sign of something? Yes, that's definitely a sign of a in, in effect. You your gums shouldn't bleed, so that's yeah. That even though it, if, yeah. if you mm. like very hard bleeding, bleeding is inflammation. Them. It's active inflammation, and this is something that uh, you want to get rid of. That that is good to hear because this is kind of a, a topic that you know flies around here and there, and people say that it's it's not a problem. It's just if you like very hardly. 
do mechanical brushing, but my kind of intuition and also the, the feeling and, and based on some papers I've read that bleeding is, is a problem in the gums. Uh, yes, it definitely is. And Tommy, can you remind me, was it 97% that if the gums uh, don't bleed, that they no, are... No, no, it's 99. So the kind of, if your gums don't bleed, so it's uh, 99% accurate that there is no inflammation there. Yeah. But if they do bleed, so you can say that uh, to at least two-thirds of the gums are I- inflamed. Yeah. So, so yeah. kind of, a, it works more more exactly backwards but uh, but uh, i think uh, the flossing daily flossing of the interdental kind of s- stuff so that would would be for for example for me it's uh, kind of probing that if there is bleeding so i know that uh, i should mm. do something yeah for for me it's it's kind of a battle that daily flossing i i <laughs> at, at times <laughs> i'm getting yeah. really excited that okay i'm doing like all the time and oil pulling and this and that but then i forget about it and i'm like uh, okay and then i and then when i do it there is a, some small bleeding but i've noticed now that after using lumeral it's significantly less and uh, at times there's there's none so it it's definitely working and, and nothing uh, beats yeah. routines yeah that's yeah Routines and what it takes time at at least three weeks mm-hmm. uh, with, yeah. with a simple uh, habit mm-hmm. of drinking water and the more complex the habit is the more time you actually need but I don't think flossing teeth is that complex it's just y- you you need to have this on site like next to your toothbrush or something like that and then it's, oh yeah there's the cue that okay I'm I'm gonna do it now uh, but that's a, <laughs> that's an encouragement to <laughs> every people that please based on our exper- exper- expertise here today, uh, daily flossing is, is a must. Uh, there's a good question for, for our dentist in the chat that uh, can you use Lumeral also without uh, the photodynamic the, the liquid that actually activates it? Yeah, yeah you can. You can, definitely. You, you can. But uh, it's, re- it's kind of made for, for using with the... With the with the rinse, and the idea of the rinse is that it it's uh, it, it has a kind of strong binding to the dental plaque. So then, if you use it with the with the liquid, you get the kind of targeted antibacterial effect exactly to the plaque. And yeah, uh, and it's much stronger. Yeah, yeah. and the effectiveness is somewhere around hundred thousand times, t- ten thousand times more <laughs> effective than without the liquid. So. So you can use, but um, it's kind of really, really. There, there is of course some some antibacterial effect, even even with the only with the, the antibacterial blue light effect, which which it provides. But uh, yeah, w- what about red light, like uh, this uh, photodynamic, and uh, not not photodynamic, but photobiomodulative uh, therapy? And this is actually the topic we have been talking about red light therapy quite a bit in yeah. previous episodes and uh, before before I began using Lumeral I had this uh, Guardian device by Biolite and I've been using it every night basically just when I'm me- meditating or, or just relaxing and it's it's a combination of different kind of or uh, red light and near infrared light uh, frequencies so is that something you would also use? I think we see it like uh, the photobio uh, f- photo biomodulating effect more as a like uh, added benefit to the the antibacterial treatment. So okay, it's, yeah. it's, uh, we see it like uh, we haven't designed the device to be uh, kind of uh, for that purpose. But of course, it's uh, uh, we have the near infrared light, eight hundred ten nanometers, as well as the antibacterial blue light, and both have tissue activating properties. So, yes. so it, uh, of course, you can you can use it as a only, only with the light. I prefer to use it with the substance because at the same same time you also get the cleaning effect and the fresh peeling teeth. Yeah, and we have actually decided not to kind of actively discuss about the photobiomodulation because uh, there is uh, enough kind of a stuff for ordinary people to kind of get the digest, get the yeah. digest yeah. the yeah. idea of a PDT. But the, the pseudochrome C oxidase enzyme is uh, absorbing light in a, in a very wide range. And uh, it, it absorbs, of course, uh, eight, 
810, and you get the effect from there. But uh, the, 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 if you want to target exactly the, 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 that kind of molecule, you, the 670 around there, you would kind of uh, hit the hit the kind of binuclear center where the oxygen is really, really kind of changing to uh, higher uh, state. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, and basically reducing the inflammation yeah, yeah. state. The oxygen reduction to water is happening there. So, but uh, for example, if if we treat uh, with light, oral mucositis, which, which is uh, caused by hardcore cancer treatments, you get your mouth b- broken, and um, we know that uh, with the 660, 670, you get the kind of good, very good results. And it's, uh, for example, in the treatment recommendation in the UK and in, in the Canada. But there are also kind of uh, some studies that show that the 810 would be as effective for that as 670. So we know that the, now th- we know that the, we have the biomodulatory effect, but uh, but uh, we are not kind of hitting that. We are on the ad- mostly on the antibacterial stuff and like Sakari said so it's kind of a added, ex- benefit. added benefit yeah uh one question before we go into the slides and deeper into the technology is um what actually causes the inflammation in the gums so that's that's kind of that's an intrigue in my mind or is it just a sign of is it just a local inflammation because uh for example i know many people if you just measure systemic inflammation marker like the HSCRP which is uh, usually very low but they still might have like bleeding gums so what are like the roots of of the inflammation in the gums uh i I just (coughs) see it kind of in a very very traditional way that the the bacteria are on the surface of the tissue and the bacteria kind of if, if they get you get the bacterial load very high so then kind of the bacteria are kind of make uh, f- affecting the tissues there comes a kind of white blood cells to combat to m- make a com- combat yeah. and that yeah. that's the kind of basic idea but the, if we take the most most um, kind of healthy uh, gums and we check out if there is inflammatory cells or not there is some and we know that the inflammatory cells belong to the kind of gum tissue as a in a kind of in a normal situation, but uh, when it uh, comes in ex- in excess, so then it kind of turns to turns pathologic. That's yeah, that's a very nice explanation, and it's a always a battle of the homeostasis. Yeah, like uh, too li- little inflammation might be actually harmful. Too much is definitely harmful. Same thing with the oxidative stress. But now let's let's go into this amazing technology, and you have pre- prepared us. Um, a few slides, and we can go go through these slides. Uh, maybe just we, you know, we have a conversation, but uh, we go through what it actually is. And uh, maybe the first thing is actually how how do you use it? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a quite simple method. I think our older oldest patients have been over close to ninety years old and have been successfully using this at home. So. What the, the device comprises, uh, comprises, it's a two, two components. One is the, the photoactive substance, which in our case is uh, indocyanin green. It's uh, in tablet form. You put it in a glass of water and it solubilizes in, a, in a, this oral rinse. And once you rinse your mouth with it, it will connect to dental plug. And then it's completely inert. It doesn't do anything. It, it doesn't alter your oral, oral flora. It doesn't kill any bacteria. You can drink it and eat it. It's, it's completely safe. But when you activate it with the light, and we have uh, our own dual light activating system, which is we have shown to be more effective than traditional one-wavelength li- light systems. And if you do that, you activate the antibacterial effect, and you pinpoint that effect to dental plaque and around the gums and uh, teeth, uh, around the gum line and, and surface of the teeth. And with this you can inactivate even those nano-sized bacteria or micro, microscopic-sized bacteria on the, uh, on the teeth surface 
which you cannot reach with the traditional brushing. And after the inactivation, even when you brush your teeth, you can remove this dead biofilm with uh, just kind of accelerating uh, uh, this water flow around the teeth surface. And this, because this bacteria is dead, then of course it's, it, it's not so well adhered to the dental teeth surface. So it mm. will, can, you can remove even the destroyed biofilm structures. Uh, uh, how, how long should you rinse with the, with the Luma rinse? The rinsing is uh, for one minute to give the active substance time to adhere to the dental plug. And then you activate that w- uh, with the 10 minutes of light activation. Okay, and uh, what is biofilm? <laughs> we, we have one slide, I think the slide number uh, six, we have a biofilm, how, it, how it's okay, formed. Okay, let's, let's uh, wait, so we, wait we, until we can there. Talk, but it's basically structure formed by bacteria on, a, on a, uh, some support, which is in this case is teeth surface. Yeah, yeah, bacteria are very clever. They always win, and, and they, they will pro- win. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> but uh, they are able to kind of externalize the, the, you know, for example, energy production outside of the cell. They they are kind of putting enzymes out outside of the cell, so they can build kind of home outside and structures. And they can, you know, some bacteria are doing certain kind of things that the others can't do and they work as a kind of a gr- as a group in concert and uh, and uh, for example in mouth we have uh, up to 500 different species that uh, can form their own kind of a system and um, if the kind of group is a little bit dirty so they can do kind of together they can do kind of harmful stuff and um, I- if it's a good group even kind of a I- if they are plenty, so maybe they are not so harmful. So it's kind of a, it's a group work of bacteria, and they communicate via quorum sensing, which is a kind of name for the for their communication methods. And a kind of funny thing, just to to clo- really quickly jump into biofilms a little bit, is also that even your oral flora is diverse. You can have a local environment in this biofilm which can be really different mm-hmm. and it can turn to be pathological yeah what, what about uh, mapping your oral microbiota is, is that uh, possible I, I know it's possible but it's that uh, d- does that give any like meaningful insight I think uh, if, uh, that at least in the I read some researchers research from uh, from the streptococcus mutans species especially in Umea University they made a like a big study with children and they saw that if one from five children have uh, this viral streptococcus mutans serotype which causes them to have higher risk of cavity formation because this certain bacteria is really mm. effective in forming this acid, pro- produces acids, which then can lead to solubilizing of enamel, which then will lead to development of cavities. And with these people, they saw that even though they have a good oral hygiene routines, they weren't able to prevent the cavity formation. So there is for sure people who have this, uh, because it, it, I think it's uh, f- safe to say that not all people, like people say that they have bad teeth. But what does it mean? Yeah. Like they brush their teeth, they do everything correct, they eat seldomly till they get these yeah. cavities. And then they just say, I have a bad teeth. <laughs> or maybe they have a, like a bad bacteria composition, which yeah. causes them to have a higher affinity of cavity formation. Indeed. But okay. what about the, kind of yeah. the biofilm, kind of recogni- recognition, uh, kind of checking the biofilm structure? So we have done checked our biofilms and uh, it, it's kind of it's definitely kind of something you can do and uh, the bacteria have a kind of the ribosome machinery in the bacteria is billion years old and it's a little bit different in every kind of bacterial species so if you take a bacteria and you kind of s- you, you check the, the dnas and uh, and so you can kind of see I- I according to this 16S ribosome and structure that um, how much do you have different kind of cells bacteria bacteria in your in your kind of biofilm and kind of you get the you get the idea what how much you have 
what kind of what kind of cells there and uh, that that's something that's very interesting and i, I think that um, this this will probably in the future be something we check out every now and then yeah. from different different places of course not yeah. only from mouth but yeah it might uh, lead lead like uh, individual treatment plans eventually exactly. like yeah. where where you can say that okay you have to do this because you have certain um, bacteria flora so so that that means that uh, the trend in uh, oral health is also going towards uh, more personalized and preventive health and this is definitely a preventive health oral health uh, technology of course can be treating different kind of things but that's that's uh, why I, i also would like to know what's the composition and uh, and and what what would be like let's say i ideal um uh, diet for for oral like the microbiome and is there like specific foods i could use for my composition of bacteria what would be actually like uh, maybe diminish uh, the activities of these kind of uh, pathogenic bacteria and so on so yeah this is definitely very very interesting how you how you can kind of change your oral microbiome by e- eating I, i i can't remember that i would have seen any studies on this but uh, for example if you kind of reduce the fermented uh, fer- fermentable foods uh, carbohydrates so you we m- probably ha- would have an effect on for example on streptococcal species which are kind of highly specialized in in mm-hmm. a kind of consuming carbohydrates but uh, in all kinds of directions and uh, kind of if you check uh, for example th- those bacteria would uh, which would um, produce a lot of lps lipopolysaccharide sub saccharides w- 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 which we know that are harmful so would you want to kind of reduce the amount of those and uh, there's a <laughs> huge amount of kind of things we could kind of check check from there and go yeah. forward i think the interesting thing is also if we look at the history and these uh, these uh, mummies or like bodies we can find from 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 a long long time ago they usually don't have uh, so much cavities even mm. though they didn't have any toothbrush they didn't have fluoride but i think the main reason is that their diet was not so rich in sugars we have it today exactly and i think yeah. just i think it eventually gets to that that you have to limit white sugar for sure Yeah, and definitely maybe not uh, after brushing your teeth in the, in the evening or night. So if you leave leave some sugars uh, overnight there, that's uh, probably going to cause some problems. Yeah, and then we also know, I think, in long long term, that uh, some extent the oral flor- flora is also uh, you inherit it from your parents. Yeah. Like uh, because of course as a kid you there is saliva transmission. Like uh, who hasn't. Uh, like uh, share the spoon or or yeah. like uh, try to blow the cool off the the, the the food or something like that and you eventually you get this exposure and and uh, i don't know what has happened in our diet in for for next last 100 200 300 years that has our all oral flora in general started shifting in some way mm. this is something which which might be interesting to look into But maybe if we look at this dia yeah, uh, presentation we have uh, here at uh, at the screen, like this is something we have been with Tom really interesting to look at uh, that this is actually the Streptococcus mutans bacteria, which is main of the major cavity causing and as well as the dental biofilm forma- forming bacteria, and this is pretty much the first bacteria which can at- attach to teeth surface. And here we can see that uh, in a, in this electron microscopy image, there is two twenty micrometers is the scale bar in the bottom, and we know that one of the toothbrush filaments is two hundred micrometers on average. So meaning that we we use now the mechan home care tools we use now, they really don't they are like they remove the excess one, but we mm. also we there is always bacteria left, and This uh, residual plaque, we like to call it that, is something which uh, is then leading to this cavity formation and leading to this uh, tartar formation and eventually even the gum disease, because it's something you cannot remove your ho- at at your home. 
that's something you have to remove at the dentist. Yeah. And it gets, like, if your dentist visits are too seldom, of course, these uh, issues might have progressed, so then you need fillings and all, all that. Yeah. Uh, there's a question, what works better than a toothbrush? I would say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody Except beats a toothbrush. Rule more all wit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no. can you yeah. can add, but uh, that's why we're here, like yeah, today. Yeah, Don't so. throw away your truth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we, we <laughs> yeah, we we do recommend you brushing your teeth, and I think uh, having this uh, electronic electric toothbrushes with uh, sonic sonic activity, I think that would be beneficial, as it just makes more energy into that area, mm. which yeah. then uh, makes the water go a little bit faster in in micro environment. And if you kill the bacteria and then you have more of this water washing, you can remove more of the biofilm. Yeah. Wh- what about um, activated charcoal? Is is that uh, of any use? Because I have a, uh, I have a kind of this uh, tooth, uh, what, what's it called in English? Basically, you know, hummus, <laughs> the yeah, yeah, toothpaste. Toothpaste, yeah. So, uh, we, which has some uh, activated charcoal. Sh- should that be used? Is that any helpful uh is it any harmful yeah, yeah there's a study there are studies that um, that uh, show the benefit of uh, charcoal too and um, i don't <laughs> i don't mind somebody using that yeah. but uh, the kind of, of course the main thing is that uh, you use um, your brush and um, maybe maybe the toothpaste to some yeah. uh, most of the people are kind of and the then then dentist Dental uh, professionals promote the uh, fluoride, uh, but not not everybody. For example, I think Japanese are the ones that um, use a lot of a lot of uh, hydroxyapatite toothpastes, and mm. kind of they they have a good good results there with that. So yeah, yeah that, that's kind of another topic of remineralization which is kind of hugely interesting in yes. terms of i think we could talk that like a, another <laughs> show even yeah you have to go, come like uh, again here because this is such a huge topic and uh, um, I, i personally noticed uh, after i changed my diet into more like this low carbohydrate approach and uh, cut off grains milk sugars and uh, basically the cavities stopped forming and i also fixed my vitamin d levels vitamin k2 magnesium calcium and and basically all the micro minerals so that had a u- huge effect and uh, then i actually quit using uh, fluoride uh, pastes because i i noticed they didn't work but which was uh, the actual uh, which was uh, like the, the causing change, I don't know, but I haven't used any fluoride in, in a long time because that kind of uh, doesn't feel good for me, but I know that there are definitely research on that, that it, it's helpful. But uh, maybe a question is that, uh, is it harmful? Could it be harmful for the body? Of course, the, there's a harmful effect. It's kind of, <laughs> the, um, kind of the dose. Yeah. It's about the dose, <laughs> and uh, we we know <laughs> that uh, there's a uh, harmful effects with fluoride, and yeah. but uh, so far we, of course, as a kind of company, we we promote the kind of fluoride use, but uh, we definitely know that uh, and acknowledge that that there there are some harmful effects, and we really respect those who 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 don't want to use fluoride, and there are sele- several al- al- alternatives. Maybe I can also go into a little bit of the mechanism of how the fluoride helps. Yeah. Is that uh, uh, basically we in 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 the enamel is hydroxyapatite, and if we add fluoride, it replaces the hydrogen molecule, makes this fluoride apatite, which then solubilizes in lower pH. So it makes it so that it's uh, the enamel itself, like there is few bacteria which can lower the pH below the the the, the fluoride appetite level threshold so it will start solubilizing so for some people fluoride is a game changer they don't have any more like their their teeth don't get any more cavities because the the flora is so that it doesn't go that low yeah but for example streptococcus mutans is one of those bacteria which can lower the ph even below four 
and that's something which then even the fluoride will solubilize. So it's it's so eff- so acid. Yeah. So it means that then at that that uh, event it won't help. Of course, whenever it gets over to I think five pH five, it will start remineralize if there is fluoride. But if there is no fluoride, I think it has to be somewhere around six. So then then it will start remineralize. So it's all about the pH balance in in mm. it. And for some some people, it's really like beneficial for preventing cavities. But uh, I think if you also take care of your diet and you don't have these sort of acid attacks anymore in such a frequency, then you you might not need it at how, all. How do you notice what's an acid attack in the mouth? It, you don't really feel it. It's so yeah. it, 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 <laughs> but it's whenever you, <laughs> you taste something sweet, you probably have it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does xylitol, uh, if you just take immediately after that, does it like uh, diminish the acid attack or mm. is it just a myth? I think uh, xylitol is the, uh, it's uh, it's like a sugar-like uh, compound which then mm. uh, which the bacteria cannot use uh, to produce these acids. So it will kind of trick the bacteria to kind mm. of, it will replace the sugar in the yeah. metabolism, so which then uh, then will help. But uh, it's not it's not something which uh, which is like a lifesaver in yeah, a way. So it, it's so, it's something which is uh, it can be good, but of course, if you la- lack the principle like the cleaning of removing the bacteria and then uh, taking care of your dietary habits, yeah. the, it's 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 a kind of small thing which can help you, but it's not doesn't solve the problem. Yeah. Okay. So uh, should you floss? Um, after using the lumoral or before? I do it after. After, yeah. Yeah, because it, you can want to kind of, after you have inactivated the plug, it's kind of just, I think you get more out of it with the flushing. Yeah. And uh, before we go into the biofilm, um, there's a question from Mindfulness at Work. Uh, if you have a gum disease, should you go to your dentist before to get a clean? to remove the plaque, uh, plaque from the NML before starting using the device? Uh, of course, you have to go to the dentist, for, for um, but I think uh, if you cannot get uh, your appointment immediately, you can start using it, and then go to the dentist and then continue using it. So in that regard, it's uh, if you start it before or after it, it doesn't really really matter, but uh, definitely you have to go to the dentist. So it's not something you start using and you forget to go to the dentist. Yeah. But we got a lot of information during the COVID pandemic, during the early phase when the kind of dental clinics were closed, and our customers were using Lumoral, and those who used frequently and they kind of finally got to the got to the clinics, so they could kind of, uh, f- for example, even hard kind of hardcore black developers had no Tata at all, uh, mm. or, or only a minimal amount. So they so they kind of started in the kind of a in between the kind of a dental visits. So it's it's definitely possible that the Lumoral can help to kind of reduce the al- already kind of formed cholari- cholaris. How, how do you kind of cre- this uh, tartar, but um, we we haven't we haven't tested that. Uh, but uh, as a general o- opinion, I, I said if if, it's if you have a tartar, so it should be removed by prof- professionals, and uh, yeah. then you can keep with this device uh, kind of the the stuff from forming. And for those who don't know what tartar is, uh, short. Uh, explanation. It's a mineralized dental plug. <laughs> okay, and uh, can you see it? Yes, it's uh, like uh, it's the hard stuff uh, near your gum line, which you cannot remove by 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 uh, toothbrush. Okay, that's uh, simple. Uh, maybe a, a few words about the dental biofilm. Yes, we have a slide about the formation of yeah, biofilm. So this is uh, basically how it happens. So you have a surface. Uh, Teeth are actually, the reason why we want to take care of our teeth is that they are body's only non-shedding surface. So meaning that it's, an, it's a co- only body's only constant sur- surface which doesn't renew every two days. So 
the bacteria can really adhere to that and start forming uh, like uh, different kind of structures. For example, that's why we have dental problems and not the, the bacteria biofilm in tongue doesn't really affect that much to us. And that's why we want to focus our antibacterial treatment also on teeth surface and gum line because that's the site where this biofilm can really form and cause issues. So what happens once it adheres, it starts uh, kind of forming this uh, slime kind of structure, which is exopolysaccharide matrix, which protects these bacteria, which then multiply and take, take live in the biofilm. And once the biofilm gets older, it, there is more and more different species getting involved. The more mature it is, usually what happens is that uh, the pH starts changing. So, for example, if we have mutants bacteria there, they will start forming acids from the, all the sugars you eat. Even though you, your oral cavity might have a neutral pH, the dental plug might have a, like a chronic pH, which is lower to, than nu- neutral. And at the same time, they will also eat up the oxygen in the plug, mm. in the biofilm, which then lets uh, anaerobic bacteria to live there. And these anaerobic bacteria are mostly, most uh, often associated with the gum disease, Porphyrmonas skingivalis, uh, AA, and, and Fusobacterium, to name the few. Yeah. And then, and this is so- something like, even though you have a healthy flora, the dental plug might have a unhealthy floor. Um, can you get rid of uh, this biofilm, um, of course, with, with uh, Lumerol, but uh, some kind of enzymes? Because I, I know um, I've been using clinical practice uh, when treating Lyme's borreliosis and, and the Lyme bacteria creates uh, this very delicate um, biofilm, but certain enzymes that break down the biofilm to actually get the antibiotic treatment to work. Is there a possibility for oral health as well? No, we, we this actually destroys the kind of the, the biofilm, the external structure of the biofilm. But yeah. I would kind of really go, uh, if we go one step to the left from the previous previous slide. No, 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 the, the, this one. The, so before the bacteria adhere to the teeth. So even if the teeth is uh, very, very clean, so the, f- the first step that happens is that the saliva forms a protein structure onto the teeth, and this is called the pellicle. And this pellicle, the protein structures have kind of the hook. It's a net where the, where the bacteria can kind of hook into. And the, the bacteria, m- they, they must be in s- certain order that they can kind of attach to the to the surface. So if you can disturb the kind of the pellicle too, like I believe we do, so it we can mm. probably kind of uh, prevent those bacteria, the biofilms even from formation. So they don't have nowhere to kind of attach to. So that's kind of just another small point that yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to bring bring out. That, that is uh, amazing. Uh, what about the next slide? So uh, now, We pr- before we began this show, we talked about the general health um, benefits of having good oral hygiene and oral health. So we know that the oral pathogens are linked with systemic diseases. Um, c- can we discuss about this a little bit? Mm. Yeah, I'm actually my mo- biggest interest has been in the diabetes, and that has been somewhat uh, kind of eye opener for me. Is that the uh, This um, diabetes uh, tends to have uh, like uh, problems with the uh, blood circulation in in in, uh, 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 in fingers and toes, but also in gums, which makes the gum tissue susceptible for for chronic inflammation, uh, periodontitis, and then at the s- it's almost it's over three times uh, higher the risk for periodontitis. And at the same time, the periodontitis itself causes the uh, chronic inflammation of the body, which then uh, eventually leads to the b- poorer blood sugar control, which mm. then uh, kind of causes the worsenest the bu- diabetes symptoms. So 
they ended up going like this one causes the other and then it causes the other and it's it's kind of it's a circle yeah if you yeah. get this negative circle in that regard it's the oral it's kind of key is to try somehow break through from it like getting the oral care in shape and then at the same time get the blood sugar in yeah. in, in control so you can drop weight by uh, yeah. taking care of your teeth and then as an end result <laughs> yeah and then actually certain uh, like uh, healthcare facilities even now in 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 Finland are looking at this multi discipline treatment uh, programs and they actually look at the in uh, in uh, diabetes that if a patient doesn't respond to this uh, medicine medicine like they think it should then they will probably book the meeting with the periodontal periodontitis doctor to check if the if it's actually yeah. gums which are causing this poor treatment sure. yeah uh, re- regarding this there's a question uh can you use lumeral uh, effectively on deeper period periodontal pockets like from five to twelve millimeters no, actually the kind of our idea is to uh, treat the kind of supra gingival plaque we we can treat the kind of we have some effect in the kind of periodontal pockets but the idea is that uh, you should have the periodontal pocket anyway clean cleaned by professionals and once it's clean the the bacteria come from the supra gingival area into the pocket so yeah. with, the, with the use of the device you can prevent prevent the 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 pockets from uh, developing these biofilms and uh, the, the light we have 810 nanometers so it penetrates pretty well tissues so the penetration depth is uh, somewhere in seven millimeters so it could, this goes through the through the kind of a the gum tissues and it reaches the pocket but um, if the like an ordinary ordinary gum pocket is uh, closed and uh, if you make a rinse so only a few a little amount of a rinse is going to the pocket if it, if the pocket it's op- is open so that's another story but uh, but um, uh, this is th- this is the kind of way that we we really in somehow at some small amount of the effect we get to the pocket what comes to the 405 nanometer light that we have um, 50 percent of the light and photons we have in the device so that uh, that part of the light is uh, really really just on the surface and uh, that doesn't penetrate mm. so uh, that, that's have, kind of so yeah we have the slide on on these different wavelengths and the lumeral has dual light, so um, yeah, maybe uh, this is one of actually my thesis work. Yeah, <laughs> I had so you're kind of an expert <laughs> <laughs> expert for for <laughs> this. It's it was a kind of really inter- interesting journey because when we look at these uh, uh, different uh, solutions and we look at different biofilms, we saw that uh, even though PDT doesn't form resistance. In certain biofilm structures can make it uh, more tolerant against the, 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 the treatment. It gets more dense or it may, maybe makes more this uh, exopolysaccharide ma- matrix, whatever. But mm. then the we saw that if we apply this antibacterial blue light into the mix, we can not just kind of uh, reduce this uh, this this. Uh, um, uh, effect of this uh, tolerance forming, but we can also make it the treatment more effective. And basically, the principle is that we apply exo and endogenous and endogenous treatment at the same time. So we target the bacteria from outside and inside simultaneously, and this makes it really difficult to bacteria to adjust its internal processes to uh, avoid the antibacterial effect. Like many of like antibiotics basically form uh, work through uh, key to whole principle, meaning that there is certain receptor which the antibody anti- antibacterial substance adheres and then it will have an effect. But then if the receptor receptor doesn't look like the uh, same, then it won't work. Mm. But with us, it's more like it's it's full. It targets the internal in inherent internal structures as well as the whole lipid envelope of the bacteria 
at the same time with the oxidative and heat stress. That, that's amazing, and that's uh, <laughs> quite quite technical. And uh, just a quick uh, shout out to you guys. There's this, this funny comment from <laughs> Hun Mimi that. Oh, you're Finnish. Uh, you have Kimi's accent. So I think that's always. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the race was very nice. So uh, <laughs> I'm using this Lumaral de- device all the time, and it's it's very good. And uh, my <laughs> mouth doesn't really move that much, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's we are very proud to be Finnish, and uh, we come up with amazing technology. What next on on this? Yeah, the idea in this, um, what we did, uh, that we st- when we started the project, we kind of started to use the InDesign in green as a photosensitizer and activating it. it. It worked very well. So, of course, the first, we are scientists, so we don't believe in anything. So, first, <laughs> as the first thing, we try to kind of um, try to fail, make it fail in all kinds of, kind of well, ways. Yeah. And um, <laughs> what we were kind of... Um, a, we found what uh, Sagar just described that uh, certain biofilms are kind of able to kind of escape, uh, not much, but uh, somehow. So this is how we kind of uh, end ended in uh, adding this um, blue light that um, attacks the porphyrins and the flavins inside the cells. Yeah. Uh, just in what about people that smoke? Is this uh, effective on on these people? I think people who smoke they tend to have worse oral hygiene on general, and of yeah. course, the pretty much none of the treatments work. But I'm I'm confident that it will definitely have a good effect. Yeah. But of course, stopping smoking will also have a benefit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But uh, it's it's also suitable for, for yes, those of course. Yeah. Smokers. In in uh, if you have periodontitis, so you belong to a special group if you smoke or you have a diabetes. So those are the kind of groups that are very very resistant to any any kind of treatment. Mm. So those kind of groups are also the ones that kind of we want to target yeah. to. Yeah. And um, so far, it's uh, only kind of an idea, but um, we are currently d- doing uh, research on that and. Uh, Testing it on patients, so we will get the get the kind of res- results, and then we know. Yeah, and uh, you have I see you have some papers or publications about this specific device, and uh, maybe a few few words about this. No, this is Sakaris. This yeah, is th- your this work. Is yeah. The, yeah, this is the one of the paper that with plus one. It's uh, the dual light uh, findings in 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 what we did in the laboratory. So it's uh, basically in this we demonstrated that our dual light approach is uh, uh, it, the effect is not additive. It's more than additive effect compared to antibacterial blue light and this uh, traditional PDT. So in that regard, it's uh, it w- was one of our first paper we published about this method to establish a, as a as a proven method for for PDT mm. treatments. And then, then of course, we have followed up with two clinical papers now. This is the first one where we studied uh, healthy dental students in 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 uh, and how they form the dental plaque. And in here, we found out that uh, by giving this APDT treatment, in one side, we could reduce the early gum disease marker as well as the dental plug amount. In this study we didn't brush the teeth but we only wanted to see how well the, the daily antibacterial effect will, uh, will prevent the biofilm formation. Is this the same study? Yeah, this, yeah it's, uh, this is the, the results from there, plug. and there yeah. we can see that there is a substantial effect in the plug formation. It was yeah. clinically significant. And of course, we saw that in in the plaque there was reduced amount of this streptococcus species, and we actually we did look at the, all of the this 16 as sequencing of the dental bacteria before and after the treatment, and both sides one side was not treated, and we there saw that uh, actually the bacteria diversity 
didn't change. So meaning that we have uh, the flora stayed healthy, but then we could see that, that there was a reduction in this streptococcus species, which is uh, making saying that the plaque was less cardiogenic. Yeah, and uh, is there, and this is uh, this is the same yeah, same yeah, study. This shows just the MMP8, which is the uh, this gamma disease marker. It, it's high. It means that you have a uh, actively there is a, this enzyme is actively breaking down the gum tissue, and if it's in the low range, it's uh, it's uh, kind of healthy, stable situation. So MMP8 is uh, kind of this de- 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 decomposer of uh, uh, collagen too. So it breaks collagen too. To. So that's kind of, it, it It works very well as a kind of marker that it, if there is a kind of tissue destruction going on or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Just a quick thing. Do you send uh, to India, or maybe if you, w- when we began selling, do we send to India? We have to figure it out. And uh, at the moment, we don't have sales permit for this medical device in India. So okay, so <laughs> that, that's kind of like. A, but what if it's not uh, advertised as a medical treatment device? Um, mm. Is it possible? I would have to ask my regulatory experts yeah. that uh, at least we are at, uh, as a company are not shipping to India or advertising okay. there. But of course, somebody buys it here and ships it to India, then of course then it's yeah. fine. So that's that's possible. So m- for, for Manju, Tirami have a friend in Europe and <laughs> get it sent out. It's in our international shop. Uh, and also, uh, I'm not actually sure about uh, if, if we send it to the US, we have to really... Um, find out that one some uh, or mexico there's a we have a huge international audience like all over the world actually our book was sold to uh, 60 different countries uh, wow plus that's great when we published that so this this is uh not just yeah. um, this is a global message and i really wish that and i actually know that these kind of inventions are the, this is the future of of the preventive healthcare uh, medicine in in total. Uh, we have some more slides here. Yeah, this is actually yeah. the, I think Tommy can talk through. It's uh, one of our first clinical trials uh, with the perimplantitis, which is t- pretty much the most difficult to treat disease in uh, in uh, in oral cavity, w- or one of the most. It means that you have a foreign object, which is uh, usually difficult to clean because it's not a uh, natural material. And then there is uh, this uh, inflammation of uh, gum around it. Mm. That is interesting because there is... Uh, I think there was yeah, this. Yeah, the yeah. we had this uh, <coughs> oral hygienist that uh, was uh, <coughs> checking out the p- as a r- a routine patients that come to the clinic and uh, if they had very implantitis, so so the kind of the patient is uh, having this kind of one of the most difficult infections to treat. So. So what she did is she gave them no treatment at all, but uh, she recommended them to use this um, lumoral device for two weeks, once a day, and after that he she checked them out. And after that she asked them to use uh, two weeks, twice a day, mm. and only after this second one month period she gave the regular treatment for the patients. Yeah. So, so like it was g- again a kind of rough test, and. Uh, what we see here that the, uh, this uh, kind of MMP8 marker went to normal range or n- close to normal range in over half of the patients, and uh, and uh, this is something you should not see with uh, any high. So this is something that the dentists are very very interested. Of mm. course, what we see too saw too that the the plaque. Uh, the amount of plaque went down, and the bleeding to probing was negative in three, uh, 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 in in uh, almost half of the patients, and uh, and uh, again, like I told you earlier, that uh, if there is no bleeding, it's a 99% kind of um, 
yeah. marking a kind of a non-inflammatory tissue. So, so and um, one patient during the one month period had a one millimeter less uh, propping depth. So kind of the diseased diseased um, gum pocket started to improve. So th- it's just a pilot study, but uh, this is something uh, that we are kind of very in- interested in. And again, it's a kind of rough testing at this point. We have um, randomized trials going on, so but uh, these uh, kind of rough tests are kind of very, very promising. Uh, for the questions uh, about our uh, followers all around the world. At the moment, uh, we send only in the EU area, uh, so European Union countries, but maybe in the future, or hopefully in the future, that's also going to be even more international. But uh, have a friend in the EU and and uh, <laughs> ask him or her to send this device to you. But uh, it's it's uh, exclusively in our bike center store, of course. The Lumaral store has it as well, but uh, for our international uh, customers. Uh, I think we have... Yeah, and just to mention, uh, there's now this special offer only for a couple of days, uh, 10% off using code DENTAL2022 when you purchase this device. We are uh, approaching the end of this uh, really fascinating show. Uh, I think there was two slides here left. Uh, maybe we just uh, go through these and have a f- couple of questions and then wrap this up. Yeah, this is uh, one of our studies which hasn't yet been published about uh, chlorhexidine. It's a golden standard treatment, but you can only use it as a uh, two weeks at a time and it affects your whole oral flora as well as has a major side, side effects. But in here we can see that there is this live and dead staining we image it in Biomedicum uh, Finland. And there the green is uh, alive bacteria and red one is dead. And the control biofilm is mostly alive bacteria with small amount of dead bacteria on the surface. Then you treat with the chlorhexidine. It kills all of it from the surface, but there's still alive bacteria uh, uh, deep inside. And then the... If you give uh, just traditional PDT and chlorhexidine together, there is still a s- it's a really strong effect, but there is still some left. Mm. And if you just use the dual light with chlorhexidine, we were able to kill all of the bacteria. We didn't find any alive bacteria. So just to kind of compare these results with the, with the, with the, uh, different antibacterial methods used in, in, in dentistry. Yeah. That that is amazing. Is corsodul uh, chlorhexidine? Yes. Yeah, I, I know my father uh, like used it every, every now and then. He, he's uh, like a retired uh, professor. So this is something we don't <laughs> want to kind of uh, yeah. kill the bacteria yeah. all over the mouth. Yeah, but uh, we exactly. can target this effect in the plaque that actually at the those parts that you want to brush and mm. get away. So if you use chlorhexidine, use all, all, all also like lumeral. You can use it together, yes. Yeah. Yep, yeah, but, but, but we don't recommend. Yes. But uh, <laughs> this is just a test, and uh, actually we get the same result with the with the dual light, like in the picture. Tr- this thing. is a little bit about the background because we wanted to make a point also that this is not uh, like PDT is not a new technology. Mm. It was actually invented in nineteen or discovered in nineteen hundreds before antibiotics. Yeah. But but uh, at the time it, you couldn't use uh, produce light to activate the substance. So when antibiotics came out, they uh, largely replaced this technology as an antibacterial method. But nowadays uh, we know that oh, of course antibiotics have side effects. There's antibiotic resistance increasing. So of course new methods of combating bacteria in continuous manner are needed, and this is pretty much one of our drivers in this field of uh, working working with the PDT and uh, developing that further, that we can also not just focus on, on, on uh, oral diseases, but reduce the use of antibiotics and help with antibiotic resistance formation in, in, in healthcare. Yeah, this is uh, simply amazing. And uh, actually... How how I came 
across Lumaralvassa uh, from my former former patient. I haven't uh, done any like clinical practice in four years, four plus years, but he, he he's kind of um, in tune with different kind of technologies, and he sent me email that his mother is actually working. Uh, at your company and uh, I, I was immediately uh, like very interested in this and I had already been using like this uh, mouth guardian piece with the red light therapy so um, I'm gonna report to you guys when my uh, the bleeding in, in my gums goes to co- <laughs> like zero I'm really looking forward to that it's it's uh, gotten a lot better it's you know it's it's not that bad <laughs> as a biker, <laughs> but there's still you know something going on and now now I know it's it's it shouldn't be there and uh, hopefully you you know do so um, anything uh, to add to the end I think we have covered this uh, topic like from all kinds of angles and what's what's in the future what's what's next or is it now it's just the beginning and now you conquer the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're looking for a bright future in, in, in uh, uh, commercialize this product and our next new upcoming products as well as serve customers in USA, in Mexico, in Asia. Like we, we are working on it, but of course it's a, it's a new company, requires a lot of effort to get the sales permits around the world. Yeah, and we are currently working on several kind of scientific projects with projects with hundreds of patients and uh, randomized protocols mm. and uh, kind of it will be kind of amazing to see the effects that we we have 3000 patients that uh, users that uh, are sending us kind of emails and uh, we know the effect on a on a non-randomized kind of a way then now now we, we can s- really see the effect in yeah in, in a scientific sense and uh, thank you for kind of inviting us and uh, it's been really a pleasure thanks for having us here yeah we will definitely come again I yes. think there are still topics we haven't covered and uh you're going to be in the biker summit right yes like uh biker summit come to the biker summit this summer Third and fourth of June in Helsinki Cable Factory. It's it's the Europe's and even the, even the possibly the world's biggest biking event. This is our twelfth event uh, in total. So we have covered a lot of different kind of topics. Now it's increasing your health span and anti aging, and this is uh, definitely anti aging device uh, taking care of your oral health. So there's a lot of lot of great companies, including Lumeral and. Uh, great presentations uh, perhaps even from you i think we we should discuss about that but uh, remember to take care of your oral health and uh, go to the biker center store to get your own lumeral device this is dr all so we are we were signing out of the biker's live studio ciao thanks Oli. thank you thank you tommy <laughs> <Sakari>. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>